Apple intelligence or AI is going to make you more productive. Someday, I'll pull up Siri by double pressing the command key on my Mac. Now I can type to Siri. Show me the email, I'll say, that PayPal sent me yesterday. I'll hit return, it'll take a second, and here it is. As you can see, it works, but it's not perfect. Apple Intelligence became available as a developer beta earlier this week. It's still pretty rough around the edges, and it has some missing features. But if you extrapolate on the current trajectory, and if you assume that Apple will execute well eventually, this is really exciting. Let me show you what you can already do with Apple Intelligence and give you a hint of what's coming. But first, let me give you some context. Apple has long had some AI on its devices in the form of Siri. But Siri has a history of being underwhelming, especially when you compare it to its competitors like Google Assistant. And with the rise now of chatbots like ChatGPT, people are starting to see how Siri could be much smarter and more capable. So when Apple announced this past June at its worldwide developer conference that Apple Intelligence was coming, which is basically a better Siri, which is really what Siri always should have been, I was excited. It had taken Apple a while to make use of the latest AI developments, particularly those in the field of the large language models that power tools like ChatGPT. But here it looked like Apple was about to do a very Apple thing, entering a market late, but then crushing it. The promise of Apple intelligence is amazing because of Apple's unique advantage that it has an ecosystem that is tightly integrated. Apple intelligence has what's called a personal context. That's just a fancy way of saying that it knows a lot about you and therefore is potentially smarter than systems that don't. For example, I could ask ChatGPT to pull up an email or summarize an email that I received last week, but ChatGPT doesn't have access to my email. I'd have to manually supply it with the email and that would not be very efficient. Apple intelligence, on the other hand, could go into my mail app or into my reminders, into my calendar, into my notes, and it would know which documents are on my iCloud drive. And because of that, it could be tremendously useful because it would have the context. At WWDC, Apple showed how this can all tie together, asking Siri or Apple intelligence, when is mom's flight landing? and you'll then get the answer. This is very cool, and if I were able to do this, it would really make me feel like Captain Kirk in the old Star Trek, just talking to the ship's computer, which knows stuff about me and is very intelligent. But how well does this work in practice? You can try this yourself if you have an Apple developer account and you install the latest developer beta. You then also need to have either an iPhone 15 Pro or an iPad or a Mac with an M1 chip or newer. And for those of you like me who are in the EU, you can only try this on your Mac and not on your iPhone or your iPad yet. So I'll be demonstrating a little bit on my Mac. And before you try this yourself, whether it's on the developer beta or after there is the public release of Apple intelligence, right after you update, give Siri some time to index what's on your device. Otherwise, it won't have inspected your notes, your documents, your emails and such yet, and then it cannot answer any questions about them. Earlier, I opened Siri by pressing the command key twice. Now I'll use a different shortcut, which is the globe key and the S key. And that pulls up type to Siri again. I'm going to say, pull up the latest episode of Pod Save America. That's a podcast that I like to listen to. Let's see what happens. It says, I couldn't find that on Apple Music. Now I'm going to say, in podcasts, open the latest episode of Pod Save America. Let's see if that works. We're just going to do some examples and see what works. See, now I'm getting a really bad um, feedback or reply here, which says, okay, I'm playing God Save America, which is a very different kind of podcast, I'm sure, that I did not want to start playing. However, when I tried this earlier, Siri did actually open the latest episode of Pod Save America for me. So it's finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's do it differently. Here, for example, is the Ezra Klein Show. Play the latest episode of the Ezra Klein Show. Latest episode of the... What a mess. Okay, let's see if it works. Okay, here's the newest episode, which is now playing. So this is an example of something that sometimes works. Let's do another one. We're going to ask Siri, what's on my to-do list for today? Let's see what happens. Siri now shows me 
some to-dos in the Reminders app that are scheduled for today. If I pull up the Reminders app, I'll show you these are, in fact, the to-dos that I've got listed under today. So this is an example where it succeeded. This shows you the promise, right? This is where all of these things are going. Sometimes it works now, sometimes it doesn't, but really, the potential is there. Let's do another one. Uh, tomorrow, I'm having dinner with a friend. I'll show you. It's dinner with D. So I'm going to say, what time should I leave the house for dinner with D tomorrow? Let's see if it can answer that. Which D? See, this is not relevant. What it should do is look at my calendar, find this event, figure out where it is, which I have entered, you just can't see it, and then know where I live and give me the travel time. This is the sort of thing that Apple claims Siri slash Apple Intelligence is going to be able to do. We're just not quite there yet. This is an early developer beta, so I don't blame them too much, but right now it's more of a teaser. Let's do another example involving Apple Notes and see whether it will work. Pull up the note I took today about the apartment that I viewed. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. You don't have any notes about, I took today about the apartment that I viewed. So Siri is not that smart yet. How about pull up the apartment viewing note? That just shows me a list of notes that are about apartment viewing. What I am trying to show you here is the future of Apple intelligence. And really, I think, the future of all computing. It's that Star Trek vision. Our computers, our devices are going to be able to know what we're talking about and do things for us as long as we give them clear instructions. We're not quite there yet, but it's coming. Now, aside from these features that don't work very reliably yet, there are some Apple intelligence features that already work really well, primarily involving reading and writing. Let me show you reading first. If you're in Safari, you can go into the reader view with this button right here. Just click show reader. And then what you can do is press this summarize button right here. And that'll take this whole article. This is a news article from the New York Times. And it'll just summarize it for you. And the summary is going to appear on the right over here. And you can read that. Pretty cool. And this summarization feature exists in other places too. If I switch over here to a note that I took about Apple's WWDC 2024 announcements, I can actually just select all, Command A. And this is something you're now going to be able to do system wide on your Mac, for example. Right click, and you'll see that there's this writing tools option in here right now. And I can show writing tools. And that'll show me these things that we all saw in the uh, WWDC announcement. We can proofread this. We can rewrite it. We can ask it to rewrite it to be more friendly, professional, concise. But we can also give a summary or key points or a list or a table. Let's press key points and see what that does. iOS 18 has some new features. iPadOS 18 has some new features. Cool. And I can click replace or I can just copy this. It's handy to copy. And now I could, for example, email that to someone. So. This is promising and you can do a lot and you can do this in many apps. If I'm looking at an email, such as this one I got right here, uh, a skydive update, uh, it was World Skydiving Day recently, the inaugural World Skydiving Day. I did a couple of jumps on that day. That was very fun. If I scroll up, you're gonna see this new summarize button right here in an email. And I can just click that and it will create this summary right here. So if I don't feel like reading a whole newsletter, I can just say, hey, skydiving incidents can be prevented through regular gear checks. Yeah, great. World Skydiving Day saw more than 30,000 jumps worldwide, etc. So this is cool. And USPA is looking for this kind of person. This is great. I can see this being great, especially at work. If you get CC'd on a lot of emails that you don't all want to read, just summarize them. There are some other summarization and reading tools as well that are coming that are not available yet, such as priority notifications, which will sort through all the notifications that you might get on your device and just show you the ones that are the most important. Uh, notification summaries, where it will say, hey, this is a summary of this long message that someone sent you on Apple Messages, for example, as well as a sorted mailbox in the Apple Mail app so that my emails wouldn't just show up in one list like this, but instead it'll sort of be like the way the Gmail has been sorting its inbox for years now. You know, this is transactional emails. This is really important emails directed to you, this is social media emails, and so on. There is also a new Apple intelligence powered focus mode called Reduce Interruptions, which has intelligent breakthrough and silencing. If you're not familiar with focus modes, I have a very good video on that, so go ahead and watch that and you can learn what they are and what they'll do. But essentially, it is customized do not disturb. And this new one is going to intelligently figure out which 
notifications should go through and which ones should not. So that, for example, when you're working and you get an email from your boss that's like, hey, I need you in this meeting now, that notification will go through. But an email from a friend who is like, hey, you want to come to a party on Friday? That one is not going to come through until you leave work. Now, Here's a point about Apple intelligence that I haven't really seen anyone else talk about. Ever since I was 13 years old and I was in English class in my Dutch high school, and my English teacher at the time suggested that I always write concisely and precisely, I've really enjoyed using my words very carefully, particularly when I write. That is a skill that's coming in so useful right now. Why am I mentioning this in this context? Because, for example, look here at my Apple Notes. You'll see that every note has a very clear title. We know what this is about. This is about an apartment viewing. This is my goals and action steps for this quarter of the year. This is my long-term vision and purpose statement. By descriptively titling my notes and also descriptively naming any files that come my way, the Apple intelligence system knows what these things are about. So from now on, if you can, I would highly recommend that you label all the information that comes at you that you might want to use again or access again at some point descriptively. Just label it well so that the system can find it and so that you can find it and you're going to unlock so many productivity gains, you know, once this Apple intelligence thing starts working well. And a related point here is that I've shown you some Apple intelligence features that either work or at some point in the future are going to work only with Apple's own apps, Apple Mail, Apple Notes, Apple Reminders, and third-party apps are also going to be able to integrate into Apple Intelligence. So for example, if you're using a to-do app that is not Apple Reminders, but that is something like a Things 3, which is the to-do app that I enjoy using the most and that I have lots of videos on here on YouTube and I offer a whole course on as well, an app like that is going to be able to integrate with Apple Intelligence and it's going to make its data, so in this case, the to-dos in that app available to Apple Intelligence as well. And that's going to be the same for if you're using a third-party calendar app, for example. But these things are going to take a little bit of time. Now, I know that a lot of people are concerned about privacy as well when it comes to Apple intelligence, because isn't it a dangerous thing? Isn't it a bad thing if Apple intelligence and therefore Apple knows all this stuff about us? I personally care a lot about my privacy and I go through quite a bit of effort to maintain my privacy as well. But to function in this world, we have to trust people and we have to trust organizations. And you shouldn't trust every person or organization but I've made the choice that, you know what, I trust Apple to make these features available for me in the most privacy-friendly way possible. That's what their record shows, that that's what they do, so I'm going to trust them on that. Totally respect you if your opinion is different, but for me, you know, the increased productivity that this is at some point going to unlock is just so exciting. Um, I'm willing to take a couple of extra risks, although I don't think Apple has really ever placed a foot wrong when it came to, you know, my privacy anyway. So, zooming out. What is Apple trying to achieve here? I think in the long run, we're all heading towards that Star Trek vision of technology of just engaging with the omnipresent computer slash intelligence. But in the short run, I think Apple is trying to empower us. They're trying to offer us benefits by leveraging AI that are going to help us in the real world. I think they're doing a great job not creating features that you know are really solutions looking for problems. No, I think Apple is really focusing on how to make our lives easier with these AI tools and especially our lives out in the real offline world. That's wonderful. And we'll get there step by step. When Apple introduced Apple Intelligence at the Worldwide Developer Conference, I saw the future of computing. We all did. But as you just saw in this video, bits of it work, most of it doesn't. But it's just a matter of time before Apple Intelligence and other systems like it are going to become incredibly powerful. Apple Intelligence isn't going to do your work for you, but it's going to make you a whole lot more productive. Someday. If you enjoyed this, Watch my other videos about what's new in Apple Notes and Apple Reminders in iOS 18 and macOS Sequoia. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Ciao.